So uh, generative design, okay? So uh, generative was introduced back in uh, back in Creo eight, okay? Uh, so the ability to uh, sorry Creo seven, sorry my mistake. Uh, the ability to uh, run essentially AI based uh, analysis a simulation of AI based geometry optimization, right? So been a bunch of enhancements along the way inside that, just adding more constraints and other things. So inside Creo 10, a uh, couple of new options there. So we can now measure the distance between geometry and the hybrid body. So the hybrid body is essentially the uh, the generative body that you create after you've run the optimization. So it might be a, a faceted model. So before you actually go off and turn that into regular solid geometry, which can take a little while, you might want to do a few checks in there. So we can uh, we can take those measurements at that point in time. Uh, we now also support remote force loads in generative design, so giving you a few more options in terms of, you know, applying forces. Okay, a uh, really nice new one is the ability to support mass idealizations in generative design. So uh, we don't have to uh, model up everything. We can just apply that sort of idealized result. And in terms of our manufacturing constraints, uh, there's a new option now there for supporting rotational symmetry. So if you're doing some cool, crazy, funky wheel or something like that, whatever it might be that you're designing, we can now have that uh, rotational symmetry. Okay. So that's a bit from me. So uh, I will hand back over to Daniel and uh, he'll talk just a little bit of simulation of generative design. Daniel, back to you. All right, thank you, Alan. Um, again, here we've opened up the uh, tail assembly of the Gills helicopter. Um, just before we get started with generative design, let me just uh, zoom in here and show you. Uh, we can go and grab these components here. Uh, let's grab the lever there. And if you notice when I grab it, you'll see that the rotor blades are rotating. Okay. Now this is fully de defined with uh, Creo mechanism design. All right. And we are now going to look at, um, at the uh, design of this housing over here. So I'm just going to go and zoom in on this housing. And we would like to go and have a look at this design. Um, now, in this design of this housing, we've already got our constraints uh, shown show here. We would like to go into live simulation and then just go and say live simulation. Now, this happens really quickly, but it's it's actually simulating on uh, live now. And we can see the stresses over there. So let me just set this to uh, MPA and we can have a look at the, we're on 353 MPA. And if we look at the deformation, we can see we're on 1.17 millimeters, uh, 1.7 millimeters. Um, but we can see from this information that we're looking at that this uh, this product will fail. Now we would like to go and redesign this um, product. So let me just go back here and let's go back to the the tail rotor. So with the capability now of generative design and the fact that we can now do 3D printing, um, let me just go and open up this part and we would like to go and redesign this part using um, generative design. Now the first thing that I'm going to have a look at here is if I go and open up my individual bodies here um, we can see I've got the starting geometry I'm just going to show that quickly so that's our starting geometry I'm just going to hide it again we want ex our exclude geometry you can probably see that but let me just unhide it so this exclude geometry we're defining so that that's where the rotor blades are going to sit. So I'm just going to hide that again. And then um, uh, we've got our other exclude geometry and our preserved geometry. So this is basically the shape that we need to preserve. So um, I'm just going to go and start the applications for generative design now. And in generative design, I'm going to now select up here. We can go and select them over here. So our starting geometry, our preserved geometry or our exclude geometry. Or I can go down here and just right click and I can say, well, this is my preserved geometry, okay? And I select that as my preserved uh, geometry. It'll put it in there. Um, I wanna go and select my starting geometry. So this will be my starting geometry. Um, it's saying that it's already got my starting geometry there. Um, starting geometry and then the exclude geometry, I would like to go and set those uh, uh, cutouts as my exclude geometry, all right? Now that I've de defined that, the important thing is we need to now go and set up um, our constraints. So I'm going to go and constrain this model on that surface. Now, um, bearing in mind, I'm keeping the exact constraints and loads as we saw 
in the previous simulation. And now I'm going to go and um, apply my loads. And in this case, I need to apply a moment load. And I'm going to apply a moment load on this surface over here, these two surfaces over there. And I'm going to say that on the X, it's 100. And on the Z, it's also 100. And it's meter newtons. So, um, and I can say OK on that. Now, I've, see, I've got, I've got my loads there. Now going to the uh, to set up the design study, um, the criteria. Now I'd like to uh, maximum stiffness and limit that down to let's say 20%. I'll give it a go on 20%. And I would like to go and add constraints. So in this uh, case, I would like to add a constraint of the building direction. I'm going to put my datum planes on and say, well, I want to flip it around from that datum plane and build upwards um, in the X direction. I also would like to go and add another constraint in, and this is new to Creo 10. Um, Alan did mention it earlier, but I've now got um, a, a constraint where I say um, rotational symmetry. I'm going to switch on my axes, select the axis, and I've got nine blades, so I'm going to go and say I need nine of them here in these instances. I've already got my material assigned, okay, my aluminium 6061 uh, T6. And I can go and say, all right, I'm happy with that design criteria. And it says to me that the, the study is fully defined up here. And now with its own AI, I can say, all right, let's go and um, optimize this, this design. Now with Creo 10 generative design, it is now going to work in the background and it's going to design this component knowing that we can 3D print it in that direction. And it's gonna create a design for us. And let me just have a look. Its optimization is complete. I'm not happy with that design. I'm going to go back to my uh, design criteria down here. Um, let me just expand it on my model tree. And I can go and say additional information. Um, let me just expand that. And I'm looking at this volume here is 20%. So I want to go and uh, edit definition that. And I'm going to take that down to about, let's see, 15% and say okay and let's just start the optimization again okay so this is looking better so there's my optimization finished and i'm happy with that now i can go to my generative design and i can say all right i want it reconstructed uh, and generate my new new design and basically smooth it out, create nice surfaces and, and this type of thing for me. However, this step will take about um, roughly probably about two and a half minutes to do. So I'm going to cancel that, but um, I'll show you. Please notice what my model looks like. Okay, um, I'm going to open up the one that I uh, created previously. Um, it's not open yet, so let me just go and open that. And it is a part, and I'll drag it right to the end because I called it this part over here. Open it. That was already created. So here can you see my generative design component. And now if I go to my live simulation on this part and I go and say simulate it, remember we've already set up the uh, design constraints. Um, exactly these constraints are exactly the same as what I set up. And it's actually solving as we go along. Um, so my deformation, deformation is now 0.22 of a millimeter. If we look at our stress and we go to our um, von Mises stress, uh, principal stress, let's just go to MPA. Okay, we can see we're on 108 MPA. Okay, so again, that was really quick to go and redesign that component. The stress levels, we've brought the stress, stress, the stress levels down. Um, considerably. Let me just go into MPA again and we can see that we're on 101 MPA and that was done using generative design by constraining this model. Um, now we can go back. I can say, all right, I'm happy with that. Go back to our model, uh, open up our um, mock-up of the assembly and here I can go and select this component and I can say, all right, well, we've redesigned it. I want to go and replace it with uh, an existing copy and I can browse to that existing copy, go and get this uh, 
part that I created, open that and say, okay. And it's gone and replaced that component. And if we zoom in here, you can see that it's now got that generative design component, no interferences, no clashes. And again, we can just go and have a look and go and drag the uh, lever around and just see. And if we wanted, we can go and see if there was any interference. But because we put that exclude geometry in, there will be no interferences in this model. And that's uh, generative design. Thank you.